Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you can uh, combine different bodies and heads uh, from different characters. So the basic points are, if you are using bones in your face uh, to control the eyes and eyebrows, for example, like I do, then you want to move the body to the head. The second point is, in general, you'd like to use a uniform uh, skeleton uh, for your different characters. The third point is, if you copy bones over, you will lose the rigging. So you don't want to copy the bones over. Um, that's why you want to have that skeleton set up first. Now, if you already have a front view and you're trying to move in a three-quarter view, moving those bones around uh, is not difficult. But it's, um, if you move the bones over, you'll lose the binding. So if you're going from like a three-quarter view to a front view or, or vice versa, you just want to make sure that you have references for the joint locations, and that will make everything easy. The next point is, if you have a standard skeleton for a particular body type, like heavy set, thin, short, whatever the different shape is, and you're really just wanting to uh, copy over a, an outfit or uniform, then really that's just a matter of copying over the layers. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to do a little bit more complex thing, which is I've got a three-quarter view, and I want to add it to the front view. And we'll see how that works. Now, of course, I could do a full body turn, but um, I feel like uh, even though I know how to do this, it's a little bit more complex to move all the bones around, and there's interaction. So it's another alternative is to have switch layers to switch the body. I do, however, like to have the head turn that can be associated with any uh, body position because I, uh, in the types of animations I want to do, uh, I have the body facing in a particular direction more often and the head turns uh, with that body being in place. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more detail. Um, so, for uh, example, in my particular uh, animations, I have bones in the face. I've got an, another video that explains how I do that, uh, but it just makes the animation easier for me. Since these bones are in the face, uh, the head turn is actually moving the bones, uh, which control the points. So I don't want to actually move the head to another body. I want to move the body to the head. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this view here and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'll name one front and one three-quarter. And this character I'm calling James, so I'm just going to select these two and group with selection. Call it James. And then I'm going to turn that into a switch layer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, file that has the body that I want to use um, and I'm going to copy that layer. Now you can do a, uh, an import, uh, file import animated studio object, you could do it that way, but here I'm just going to copy. So I'm going to copy layer and then I'm going to go back to my James area and I'm going to paste layer. So now I've got that three-quarter one, and something that you should have noticed is um, I use the same uh, styles, but just have different coloring. And so as it imported in here, since the styles were named the same, it uh, returned to the coloring that I have for this particular character. Now, this is nice. It uh, looks like the similar character, but of course it doesn't have the right head. So here's what we're going to do. Since I duplicated that original um, and named it three-quarter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that three-quarter and I'm going to delete all of the, the uh, layers that are above the head. And just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to close the three-quarter and I'm going to take this Z character, move it above the three-quarter, open back up the three quarters just so I can see and drag things down a little bit um, and what I'm going to do is select uh, these layers and move them down but before I do that 
what I want to do is I want to make sure that the reference circles are all in the right place. And the reason I do that is because as I was creating and fixing this character, I may have moved the bones without moving those circles. So I always have a reference layer uh, underneath the bone layer. So let me turn that on, and we can see it helps me to know the head size and then where the, the whole body is. Now, that's a, a point that you need to be aware of. We do need to make sure that the three-quarter size that I'm trying to fit matches that same size here. So maybe if we need to make him a little larger, a little bit smaller, that's what we need to do. So let's uh, make sure we do that first, is get the, the sizes correct. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have that reference layer uh, for the front view, and I just moved a copy of it outside um, and make sure that it fits this character all the way from the head down to the feet. Now, um, as we think about where the feet are, you could put it at the very bottom, but as the three-quarter is turned, it, uh, you're going to have one foot a little bit higher and a little bit lower for the perspective, so I'm going to put the bottom there. That's how I want it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my switch layer to this Z, that's that imported character, and I'm going to uh, use the layer transformation on Z to scale him and place him at the right place so that it matches well with uh, the character that I'm trying to match. So here I zoom in close and I'm going to move that and I'm going to go ahead and put my origin point right at the top of the head and what that allows me to do as I come down to the bottom and I'm going to scale this with the layer transformation and I'm going to scale it until we match that black line right there and by setting that origin what that allowed me to have happen is now we've got it scaled to the right size all the way. There's a little difference in the head size, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Now that the Z character is the right scale, uh, what I'm going to do is now make sure that these um, circles, these reference circles, are in the right place. Now the thing that we need to make sure is that the uh, point of <coughs> each of the bones is at the center of this cross mark. So that cross mark is in the reference uh, layer that I have for Z, and I'm just going to select them, and if I need to move them at all, move them how I want. Now an interesting point you might want to be aware of is that underneath Edit Preferences, um, Enable GPU, if you have that enabled, you might see um, these can sometimes look very blurry. So it all depends upon how you have things set up. So you might need to turn off um, Enable GPU if that uh, reference circle looks blurry. So uh, the thickness or the radius of this circle is equal to where the arm is going to meet. Okay, So I'm just checking that these things align with the bones. Now notice that the shoulder was pretty good and the elbow was right but the wrist is not so I'm going to take that wrist and I'm going to put it at the center okay and I will do that for each of the reference circles including uh, for the legs for the wrists for the knees and for the ankles now in all reality you don't actually need the circle since we're going to copy the rest of the body and we use that circle to uh, determine the size of all the different uh, <coughs> arms and legs. All you really need in order to move things over is where the location of this bone center should be. So you really just need the, the crossing. But I'm going to, I just move everything together uh, for consistency. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to that three-quarter layer again and I'm going to close up the head. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag all of the layers that are above the head right above the head for three-quarter. So here I go. Z is the one I'm copying from and I'm going to copy all of the layers including the reference layer. Everything above the head. And I'm going to 
shift click all those, select all of them, and drag them down until and put them right above the head. Okay? And then the next thing that I'm going to do is everything below the head, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And so I'm going back uh, to that Z character and I'm going to select all of the files uh, or all of the layers that are below the head and drag them down below the head. Now going below the head is a little bit hard so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go above the head and then I'm going to drag the head up above the torso um, because uh, copying all the way down to the very bottom is a little bit hard. Okay, so what you should notice now is that I have the whole body copied over. Um, now there's a little bit of difference between uh, the, the ordering, so I'll have to tweak that a little bit, uh, the neck and uh, the back of the hair, but things are pretty much in the right, so the, the body is in the right place. Now, if I go to this three-quarter, again, that's the one I'm copying to, um, and I manipulate the bones, you see that the rigging is working properly, but the bones are not located quite in the right place. Uh, but we do have the rigging working the way we would expect. So now all I have to do is move the bones to the proper location. Okay, so at this point we're uh, done with this Z character, so I can delete that one. And we're just focusing on the three-quarter. And so all I need to do, all of this, I should have been making sure that we're at frame zero. And so all we do is select the bone layer and now we zoom in as we need to and take into consideration uh, the original bone locations because uh, we have them all linked um, and so you can move whichever bones that you want to move. If you want to move the body uh, bone over a little bit it's going to move all the others. That's the point that I'm trying to express here. So the body uh, bone locations are not uh, too terribly important, so I'm going to move those a little bit here uh, to give me more like the chest, and then I'm going to move this over a little bit, so I've got the collarbone the, basically kind of the way that I would expect it to be, and I'm going to continue that. So now we're getting to the actual joints, and I'm going to show you the critical part is to make sure that the uh, end point of the bone is right in the middle of that cross and you can zoom in as much as you need to and put that in the proper location and then make sure that the other point uh, bone uh, the final bone doesn't have to um, end here on that point but it's kinda easy to do that because in the <clears throat> the next uh, version 11 um, they snap and so that's pretty nice there so you can zoom in as much as you need to uh, and the critical point is that we have to be right there at that center. So we continue that with all of the bones and then we'll show how it looks rigged. Now if you don't already know, um, for the knees, uh, if you have the character facing in a particular direction, you want to have a little bit of a bend just a very little bit of the bend so that uh, what that will do is that as you animate the character by moving his, his hips, uh, the knees will bend in the proper direction. So these uh, knees are not right in the middle of the leg because I'm trying to get that bend. So now what we can see is that um, all we had to do is move the bones and the character is pretty much rigged the way we would expect it to be. Now, there may be some tweaking that you'll have to do, like for example, I've got to do uh, some smart bone tweaking, uh, and, and that's, that may uh, be the case, especially if the skeletons are not exactly um, the same, um, but you've got most of the work already taken care of. Now, as we look at the um, actual animation, uh, the first thing I want to notice is that as we talked about the, these uh, bone angle. If I'm on frame zero and I am moving a target bone, 
the the bone may or may not bend in the right direction. So just to test it, you take it off of frame zero, and now the bone will bend in the correct direction. However, the thing that I want to point out here is that the um, smart bones aren't working the way we would uh, like them to work. So we've got to tweak them a little bit. And so what's going on here? Um, the reason for that is because I don't have uh, this original skeleton um, that I, where I move these bones, um, w did not have smart bones in the same way. So they weren't the same type of skeleton exactly. So let's see what I mean by that. Um, if I go back to the original one and I look at the animation for the left lower leg, we see um, this animation here at starting at tw uh, layer, uh, excuse me, frame 12, going to frame 24. Um, now if I go back to uh, my character that I'm trying to copy over to and I look at the uh, left leg, we'll see that the frames did copy over properly. So why didn't it work the way we'd expect? Well the answer is uh, two things, um, but mainly it's the, the fact that when I look at the leg itself, there's no uh, animation for that leg itself. So if I go in here and at frame 24, I turn it to the right angle, then what we'll see as I go and try to animate uh, this leg, that it bends more like it's supposed to. Okay, but before I actually do that, um, what I really want to do is I want to go to the original leg and I want to take a look at the bone constraints. So here I've got bone constraints from a negative 145 to a 5. If I come and look at uh, the character that I'm trying to copy to and again make sure I'm at frame 0 and now I'm going to look at the bone constraints for this lower leg and it's negative 155 so I really want to change that to 45 and I want to change the other one to 5. They need to match. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, set all the bone constraints properly and then now I can go in there and um, put the bone to the proper angle um, and make sure it matches there and I do that for each of the bones and if I do that then it will make sure that when we're ready to animate the smart bones work as we expected. And again if you have um, a standard skeleton um, then all you have to do is just copy the layers over and everything will work uh, properly. So that would mean that the bone should be named uh, the same thing. The, the uh, actual um, body shape in terms of the vector doesn't need to be the same. But between, for the standard skeleton you want the bones to be named the same and in the same kind of location. And in addition what you want is that for your um, smart bones you want to, to have a standard size, whether it be 24 or 48 or however many frames that you use for your uh, type of animation, you want to have that standard so that it's easy to copy between them. And then from that point, it's just a matter of uh, if you want to change the shape a little bit or the style a little bit, um, it allows you to tweak things much easier. So I hope that's helpful and uh, enjoy animating.